Hello YouTube, internet, world. Welcome back to Dime Store Cinema, the show in which I watch low-budget, independent, foreign, and classic cinema. I give you my two cents so you can decide if it's worth your dime. Let's all take a moment of silence now for a terrible national tragedy. I'm talking about this entire farcical election. I would like to apologize in advance for all of the offensive things that are going to be said by our president. I want you to know that he's not an accurate representation of the majority of people. At least I hope not. If he is, then God help us all. I figure it'll be good to watch a movie that really inspires us to be good, patriotic Americans. I'm of course talking about the 2011 film, God Bless America. What? What's that? Oh, it's not a patriotic film? It's about a couple of spree killers who kill obnoxious, stereotypical Americans. Oh. Apparently, it's actually a satire lamenting the intellectual, emotional, and uh, political state of the United States. Still fitting, I think. The story follows a middle-aged white man named Frank. He is constantly tormented by his loud neighbors. I share his pain. He is unjustly fired from his job. He is diagnosed with a brain tumor and is given very little time to live. He comes to the realization that people in general are just too mean. And it all culminates with him watching this movie's representation of that MTV show is about the the 16 year olds who have the huge elaborate parties and act like horrible, awful garbage people. Now what pushes him over the edge is that he then sees characteristics of the teen on the show in his daughter, whom he is estranged from. He and his wife had divorced. His wife took his daughter and moved out of the area. So once he sees his daughter having these same ridiculous uh, reactions to not getting what she wants, it kind of pushes him over the edge. And he decides that he's going to kill the star of this TV show, this teenager, this 16-year-old. And in doing so, he enlists the unlikely help of a young girl named Roxy. And they go on a killing spree, killing people that they believe are, are just not nice. The, the movie follows them as they make their way across the country, killing people. They get to the point where they decide that they're going to leave the country and live a simple life in France. When Frank finds out that Roxy's been lying to him the entire time and she's not the product of an abused home like she had said, she's just a runaway, she's a bored teenager who wanted some excitement. So Frank leaves her and he decides to do one final attack on a American Idol type game show. Conceptually, it's interesting because it's, it's putting you in the perspective of a spree killer. It's making you sympathize with them. What's interesting is that, <clears throat> particularly in Roxy's character, a lot of the characteristics that Frank opposes in particularly the younger people Roxy expresses but just in a different way. Her temperament and her desire to force her will on others is very reminiscent and almost a mirror of the 16 year old that he killed from the TV show. Their actions and their goals align even if their motivations are different. And it creates this very interesting Harold and Maude meets Bonnie and Clyde feel, which is really what made the movie work. I will say that the, the movie has a little trouble with pacing. It has a little trouble with 
uh, the script, mainly the dialogue. A lot of the dialogue feels a little forced. There's some really good dialogue. Um, there, there really is, but there, there's some dialogue, particularly uh, Roxy's dialogue, that just seems a little too stereotypical, seems a little too forced. There are some monologues that Frank makes that are a little too on the nose, almost like the director is talking and not the character. You run into that kind of thing a lot in independent film, though. Writing like anything else is a skill that you develop as you do it. This movie is very entertaining, and as morbid as it sounds, some of the kills are absolutely hilarious. I will warn you, this is a, actually it's a pretty offensive movie because it is sympathizing with spree killers. Uh, I know for a lot of people that's a sensitive subject. Uh, I know that a lot of people have been affected by that type of violence. So it's not a sensitive movie. However, I will say that good satire is never sensitive. I always bring up Jonathan Swift, particularly his work, A Modest Proposal. There was nothing sensitive about that. I mean, there's, there's nothing kind or particularly easy to digest about the idea of eating the children of the poor to provide for the food shortage as well as alleviate the financial burden on the poor. It is an inhumane, uh, morally offensive work. And I would say that this movie is as well. It's not bashful about the message that it's trying to send, tapping into the, the darker side of humanity where, you know, we don't want to deal with problems, we want them to just go away. Those are my two cents. In general, I would say this is a good movie with a decent script. The pacing was a little off and some of the dialogue was a little off. But overall, I thought that it was a good film. Thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe. As you know, I live for your validation.